All right, shalom, shalom to all of the mess for there, shalom. Especially to the most highest one third, hopeful, sincere, elect out there, shalom. For those who's unaware in modern day terminology, that means may peace be on to the family. All right, so let's get this started by giving our honor, thanks, praise and glory to our heavenly father and his only begotten son, in which is the most high and the son of Christ and who this world and society foolishly and ignorantly deems Jesus. Secondly, much love and support to all of the brothers and sisters out there who's doing this work with all faith, truth, and sincerity, spreading the word to all of our people out there with eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to understand, preferably towards the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent only once again. This is your brother Yahweh Yashara from the Sea Souls of Israel, the Rocks of Offense, and also the Ambassadors for Righteousness, the Advocates for Christ once again dropping you another video and what this video is going to be about is how we're not supposed to be praising and honoring and worshiping Christ as he's God almighty man right we're not supposed to be doing that that's pure idolatry right we're not supposed to be praying to Christ we're not supposed to be worshiping Christ as he's the most high man right now unfortunately you got a lot of our people that's walking around that's involved in religious church and and Roman Catholicism they're actually going around telling people that Christ is God. He's God Almighty. And when we send up our prayers to heaven, we're supposed to pray to Christ, right? We're supposed to worship Christ, man, right? And that's non-biblical. There's no scripture that says that we're supposed to be praying to Christ, right? We're supposed to be following Christ's example, okay? And then, of course, you know, us brothers and sisters in the truth, we know that Christ was sent into the world to keep his father's law, statutes, and commandments and reinstill those laws, statutes, and commandments back into our people, man, right? So that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be following Christ as an example. And then when we give our prayers and supplications up to the Most High, which is God Almighty of the Bible, we do it in Christ's name. Now, I'm talking about the real authentic Christ of Nazareth, man. I'm talking about the image of the beast that's in religious churchianity and Roman Catholicism, right? Now, unfortunately, also in Roman Catholicism, it's also teaching our people that we need to pray to Virgin Mary. And that's just straight idolatry, man. Not only are they teaching our people that we need to pray to Christ like he's God, but also worship Virgin Mary, man. Right. This is what our people is doing in religion, man, in religious church and in Roman Catholicism. Right. Even on the Internet, man, you can see all types of images of people kneeling down and bowing down and worshiping the Virgin Mary, man, like she's God or a goddess. Right. The scriptures don't speak of goddesses, man. Right. And if it does, it's referring to them being wicked and evil as hell, man. Right. Especially us people of the faith, man. You know, there's nowhere in hell we should be praying to Christ and worshiping him and praising him like he's God Almighty, man. Right? We're not supposed to be doing that. So we got to pull our people out of this idolatry, man. Okay? A lot of our people are going around thinking that Christ is God Almighty. And this is because this is what they're taught in religious church entity, man. Right? There's nowhere in the scriptures that tell us that we need to pray to Christ. It says that we need to pray to the Most High in Christ's name. Even Christ himself said that, man. He said, why thou callest thou me good? In paraphrasing, right? There's only one good, and that's my Father up in heaven. So even Christ himself refers to him as a being that's sent from the Most High to do his will. Okay? He didn't refer to himself as God. Neither did he refer to himself as the Son of God. Right? Right? He speaks of the son of man, but he haven't referred to himself as the son of God, man. Now, in the scripture, he says, when you've seen me, you've seen the father, because that means that him and the father is on one accord. He came to do the will of the heavenly father. But not once have he referred to himself as the son of God, right, or God himself. So why our people are going around calling Christ God almighty and that when we need to pray, we need to pray to Christ. All right. There's no scripture that says that, man. So our people need to repent from that idolatry, man. And I got a couple of scriptures that I want to bring out concerning this matter. Now, mind you, 
I actually already did a video on this concept, man, like nearly two, three years ago, right? And it's like almost two hours long, probably more than two hours, you know, if I can recall. You know, you can go check it out whenever you get a chance, man. But I've run out a lot of scriptures that actually proves that Christ is not God Almighty, man. Right? So we don't need to be praising and worshiping Christ as he's God. Right? Now, some people may um, beg to differ and say, you know, when you're worshiping and you're praising someone, you're just honoring them. Right? But if you look up the definition of worship, that means to worship a deity, to call upon a God. Right? That's what that is. Now, if you look up in the definition of praise, it may have worship as a similar to, right? Or even if you were, if you look up the definition of worship, you may have praise as a similar to, and which we will get into, right? But those words are used interchangeably. It doesn't really actually mean the same thing, right? It's used interchangeably, but it doesn't mean that it's actually 100% similar, okay? So we shouldn't be worshiping and praising Christ as the most high God of the Bible, man, right? But we're going to get into all of that. I'm going to bring out the definition of what worship is. I'm going to bring out the definition of what praise is, okay? What a deity is, all right? And we're going to get right into it, man. So the first one that I want to go to is in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5, which is concerning the most highest commandments, right? And I'm going to start at verse 1. And it reads, And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, okay, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent only, right? The statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, okay, so... This actually referring to today, too, although this is speaking about the Israelites when we came out of the first Egypt back in the, the first Exodus. But this is also referring to us today as well, too. Right. In continuation, that ye may learn them and keep and do them. All right. Verse two. And the most high our power made a covenant with us in Horeb. All right, that's in the, the wilderness outside of Egypt, right? Close to Mount Sinai. Verse 3. And the Most High made not this covenant with our fathers, but with what? With us. Even us who are all of us here alive this very day, okay? Even referencing today, right? Verse 4. And the Most High talk with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire, verse 5, in parentheses, right? I stood between the Most High and you at that time to shew you the word of the Most High. For ye were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up into the mount, all right? So when the children of Israel, when they seen the Most High's present on top of Mount Sinai, of course, you know, that was like a very frightening sight, man. You probably seen like this huge storm cloud with lightning just just flashing all over the place right and with the sound of thunder very loud thunder right in continuation saying i am the most high thy power which brought thee you israel right out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage okay so that's what egypt is synonymous with with bondage right verse seven Thou shalt have no other gods, lowercase g, right, before me. No other gods, okay? So if you're worshiping Christ as God, then you're basically saying that Christ is God, man. You're replacing the Most High God with Christ, okay? And Christ was sent by God. He's not God himself. So if you're saying that we need to pray to Christ, then you're saying that he's God. You're putting Christ over God, over the Most High, man. Right? And then to think about it, you know, if you're going to worship Christ as God, that makes it more easier for you to worship other deities, man. It makes it more easier for you to worship Mohammed. It makes it more easier for you to worship Fucius, right? 
Muhammad and Islam, Madhava, Krishna, Shivna, all right? All of those false gods and Hinduism, all right? Buddha, okay? All of these other false deities. It makes it more easier for you to have self-projectory, right? You're going to have all of these idols, all of these crystals, all of these rocks or whatever. You know, uh, idols made out of wood and stone, okay? It's going to make it that much easier for you to worship all of these other deities, man, right? Now, that's not speaking about Christ because Christ was sent by the one and only true God, right? And all of those false other deities of all of those false religions is false, man, right? They're just men of the world, right? But unfortunately, people worship them as gods, right? So once again, verse 7, I digress. Thou shalt have none other gods before me, right? None other gods, man. Verse 8. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth okay so you're not supposed to be making all of these false images of gods man like today you got people making and carving images of the eagle right images of the lion images of the bull okay which was the bull of molech in which the two-thirds of our nation of people the sinful people of israel after we came out of the first egypt they was worshiping in the wilderness right the molek bull the carving okay made out of gold all right you have people making a graven image of owls okay of the crescent moon with the sun and the stars in the middle okay other planets like saturn jupiter all right which is symbolic for satan himself okay so you have all of these graven images that's being made right verse 9 Thou shalt not bow down themselves unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Most High, thy power, am a jealous God, right? A jealous power of a case G, right? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Okay, so that's how far the Most High go down, which is the third and fourth generation, man. Okay. Verse 10 and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and what keep my commandments okay so that's what the most high is going to shew mercy to all right even in our land of our captivity if we're keeping the commandments of the most high and the statutes and laws to the best of our ability then the most high is going to shew mercy onto us man right you got a lot of people that say that we're unable to keep the laws that's the commandments of the most high in our captivity but that's not true, man. You know, if we're serving the Most High, if we're able to do everything else according to this society, and the Most High, according to the scripture says, his laws and commandments are not grievous, then we can do this, man. If you honestly believe that the Most High have created all things and he's controlling all things, then why can't you keep his law, statutes, commandments in your captivity, right? The Most High is even controlling your oppressors, man, all right? So haven't you once thought that maybe he could be putting you to the test? Because if he's controlling all things and then you're complaining about how you can't keep the law, statutes, the commandments in your captivity, then you're saying that you're unwilling to obey the Most High, right? Because the Most High is controlling and orchestrating all things, right? So he's putting you to the test through your oppressors, man, to see if you're actually going to do his will. Are you going to do the will of your oppressors and put their will in front of the Most High's will? Right? So this is what's going on, man. Verse 10, again, from the top. And shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments, man. All right? And what's one of those commandments? In verse 7, as it says here, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. All right? So this is what this is all about, man. Okay, let's go to the book of St. John, chapter 4.
Okay, so once again, we're in the book of St. John, chapter 4, as you can see here on my screen. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And it reads, When therefore the Most High knew how the Pharisees had heard that Hamashiach made baptized, so like it made and baptized more disciples than John, verse 2 in parentheses, through Hamashiach himself baptized not, but his disciples. Okay, so that's all Hamashiach baptized was his disciples, but before Hamashiach, it was St. John that was doing the baptizing, right? He was doing the baptizing according to the, uh, the laws, which was by water, right? Verse 3. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, verse 4. And he must needs go through Samaria, okay? Where Samaria? That's located in the northern kingdom of Israel, right? Verse 5. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob, which is Jacob, right? The father of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Gave to his son, Joseph. Verse 6. Now Jacob well was there. Hamashiach, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour of the day, all right? So that's the sixth hour of the day. Now, if you do the calculations of that today, that would be around, you know, like 12 o'clock around that time, right? There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Hamashiach said unto her, give me to drink. Verse 8 in parentheses, for his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Verse 9, then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, actest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? All right, so right there, that's letting you know who Hamashiach was in the flesh when he was sent into this world by the Most High, right? He was a Jew. What is Jew? Jew is short for Judah. Judah right of judea right salakia so that's letting you know that hamashiach actually had a lineage and a people who he was from okay and if he had a lineage and the people who he was from then he obviously had to have a color all right and a body all right a lot of people think that hamashiach wasn't real they thought they think that he was just a spirit just walking around here performing his miracles and doing his work to the most high man like he was some sort of a puff of smoke or something man but that's not true right here as is written in scripture you know a woman of samaria was conversing with hamashiach all right you can't converse with a spirit right if you just put logical thinking to this right here can you actually see and speak to a spirit i don't think so right so how hamashiach was a spirit okay hamashiach had a body man he had a lineage of people. He had a color. All right. Verse 9 again from the top. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew from Judah, right, or Yehuda or Yahweh, right, axes drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans, right? So the reason why she said that is because the northern kingdom they have long gone went into captivity and idolatry, right? They went into captivity because of their idolatry, right? So they wasn't keeping the ways of the southern kingdom. They wasn't keeping the ways of the Most High, right? Even during the second Passover when King Hezekiah, he tried to uh, send letters to the northern kingdom to get those guys to come back, you know, to the um, the lands of Ephraim and Gad and, um, and all of the, you know, the other areas of the northern kingdom you know like as a car and places like that but you know they laughed him to scorn and they mocked him and they told him that they would not keep the passover they didn't want to keep the customs of the southern kingdom which was the customs of the most high so you know during that time this is the reason why christ he was only dealing with the people of the southern kingdom because at least they were still clinging on you know they were still a righteous people there in the southern kingdom although they still had a few righteous northern kingdom israelites too 
but mainly Hamashiach, he was sent to redeem the southern kingdom, right? So that's the reason why she says this here, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans, right? Verse 10, Hamashiach answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of the most high power, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water, okay, what's the living water? The truth, these scriptures, right? So Hamashiach is saying to her, if you would have truly knew who I were, then it wouldn't have been no problem, right? You would have gave me that drink with no problem at all, right? So Hamashiach is trying to give her a hint like, yo, I'm the Christ, you know what I'm saying? You better recognize who I am around this piece, right? <laughs> but because she was a woman of Samaria, you know, she wasn't really too sure about, you know, who was Christ and how he would look, all right? She probably had some other false deity in her mind, right? Verse 11. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? So she wasn't even too sure what Hamashiach was speaking about there when he was speaking about the living water, right? Verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? All right. So that's letting you know also that she was of the lineage of Jacob, but she was of the northern kingdom. But she was a Gentile minded northern kingdom Israelite, right? Which gave us the well and drink thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Verse 13. Hamashiach answered and said unto her. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, which is the literal water, right, of the well, right? Verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him or her shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him or her shall be in him or her a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Okay, so Christ is letting her know that if you follow me, if you follow the teachings of the Most High through me, then you're going to have everlasting water, right? And which spring up, up to everlasting life, which is Shamayim, heaven, right? Verse 15. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, right? So now she's talking about the living water that Hamashiach is speaking about, right? That I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Verse 16. Hamashiach said unto her, go call thy husband and come hit there, all right? So that's letting you know right there, Hamashiach was keeping the laws of the Most High. Right now, it's written in the law that a man shouldn't converse with a woman that's married, that have a husband, right? So right here is letting you know that Hamashiach was keeping the law. He was sent to this world to instill the laws back into the people, man, right? The laws of the Most High. Right. If Christ came with his own law in his own ways, then he would have conversed with her. He would have gave her the living water. But Christ, he wanted to respect her husband in which she didn't have, which you will see right here. But you could probably already see it on the screen. But Christ wanted to give that water to her husband so her husband can teach her, which is the proper way. Right. Verse 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Hamashiach said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. Verse 18. For thou hast had five husbands. Okay, so that woman, basically, she was a harlot too. Right? She was dipping and dabbing with all of these different guys. Right? As it says here. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband. So, not only she's messing around with five guys, but the guy she's also messing with ain't her husband, right? So she creeping around with a married man, right? And then she's married herself because she had other men, right? So you can't say that she's a single woman, you know, messing around with a man that's married. Then she wouldn't be in, in, in a adultery, all right? She would just be like a second wife or something. But being that she had other men that she was dealing with, which was five men and plus another married man, right? This is what you would deem basically a hair lot, right? In, today, in today's terminology, that would be a whore, okay? Or a hoe, as we say in the hood, right? <laughs> Verse 18 again from the top. 
For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, right? And that saidest thou truly. Okay, so this is what the woman is doing now, man. You know, the woman is going around, they messing around with, you know, Curly, Dick and Moe or whatever, and you know, John, Jimmy, and 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 Shaq and whoever you want to name, right? They're going around messing with all these different men, and they're actually telling these guys out here, like, yo, I ain't messing around with nobody. You know what I'm saying? I, I go home every night. I'm home by myself. You know what I'm saying? I just sit on my couch or whatever, watch a little movie, and that's what I do. You know, they're talking about how they are not messing with no men at all, man. But they actually have like two and three other different guys that's calling their phone, man. The same exact thing that these women are doing today, man. In which this women of the Northern Kingdom from Samaria is doing, man, right? Verse 18 again from the top. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now has is not thy husband, and that thou sayest truly. Verse 19. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Okay, so now she's coming to terms of who he is, right? So not only was Christ known as the Son of the Most High and the Savior of Israel, but he was also a prophet because he was prophesying of the things that was going to come upon the southern kingdom in the future, right? Verse 20. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship, okay? Because that's the southern kingdom. You know, that's the, 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 the mother of us all, man, which is Jerusalem. That's where everyone's supposed to go when they're keeping the high holy days, right? Especially the Passover, okay? Or the three major festivals. Verse 21. Hamashiach saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Okay, so right here, Hamashiach is letting you know that you're supposed to be worshiping the Father. Okay, not me. I'm not the Father. I'm not the Most High. I'm not the God of the Bible. I'm not God Almighty. You got to worship the Father, man, right? And the mountain that's being spoken about is basically the countries, right? That's what the mountains is. If you, and the reason why it's called a mountain, because if you were to go in the middle of the ocean, right, and there was no water there, that's like if you're being in the, the Grand Canyon, like how you could go between the canyons and you could look up at the mountains. But when you get to the top of the mountains, everything is even. It's like it's like a straight plane, but between the trenches of the mountains and the Grand Canyon, it, it looks like mountains if you're at the bottom of the canyon, right? So if you're sitting in the middle of the ocean and you're looking at like say america from the bottom of the ocean it's going to look like a huge mountain right because you're going to have to go up like if you're in the bottom of the ocean you're going to have to go up the ocean to get to the surface of the water and then you're going to have to come upon the land right so that's the reason why it's referred to as mountains right the countries just to throw that out there right Verse 21, again from the top, Hamashiach said unto her, Women, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Okay, so he's differentiating, you know, the northern kingdom from the southern kingdom, right? Because he was in Samaria. He was in the northern kingdom at the time. Verse 22, ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the who? Of the Jews, okay? which is first the southern kingdom all right verse 23 but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers okay the worshipers shall worship the father okay in spirit and in truth he didn't say the true worshipers should worship me all right for the father seek of such to worship him verse 24 the most high power is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth okay meaning that you can't be fence straddling in this thing man if you call yourself a so-called christian which is a follower of the real christ of nazareth and a believer of the god of the bible then you only supposed to be worshiping god and following christ only right you can't be mixing a little bit of islam up in there 
you know, calling it Krishlam, and which Roman Catholicism did. You know, they merged Roman Catholicism and Islam together. All right. And then, of course, you know, Christianity, so-called Christianity came from the Roman Catholic Church. So now you have Krishlam. All right. So this is what they're doing. They're merging Hinduism with so-called Christianity, Buddhism with so-called Christianity. Right. Confucianism. You worship in uh, Fucius. Right. You have all of these beads and crystals and rocks. Right. As your saviors, as your protectors, man. Hamashiach is supposed to be your savior and protector. Right. You join in these secret societies, fraternities, sororities, you know, worshiping all of these ancient Greco-Roman deities, man. Right. You're not supposed to be mixing so-called Christianity with that, man. Right. So this is why Hamashiach says this again in verse 24, man. The most high power is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Knowing that he is the only God, man. Okay. Christ is the only son and savior of the most high. All right. So this, like I said before, you know, let's get into a little bit of definition of words here. We're going to go to the definition of the word worship, right? Because you got a lot of people that says, you know, when you're honoring Christ, you're worshiping them, right? But see, but it's not according to how they think, you know, because if you're worshiping Christ, you're worshiping him as a deity, as God. All right. So it's a little bit more than than what meets the eye when it comes to the word worship. Right. So we're going to go to the definition of the word worship. Okay, so we got it right here, as you can see on the screen. And as it's written right here, the first Worship. definition, which is a noun, and it says, the feeling or expression of reference and adoration for a what? A deity, okay, which is a god, right? And as it says here in the sentence below it, the worship of God. OK, so that's who you're supposed to be worshiping. You're supposed to be worshiping God. All right. The most high God. Right. And then the verb definition, it says show reference and adoration for a what a deity honor with religious rights. OK. So that's what you're doing when you say we are worshiping Christ. You know, you're not only saying that you're praising him. Or honoring him you're actually worshiping him as a deity a god right as it says here in a similar it says reference revering worshiping venerating venerating or veneration and venerating right adoration adoring devotion praise okay thanksgiving praising glorification glorifying glory all right and then you get the message right it's on the screen here so of course it have praise right here right so we're going to go to the definition of what praise is and it says right here praise the expression of respect and gratitude as an act of what worship okay so you're actually worshiping christ when you say that you're praising christ and what it says here, when you worship something, you worship them as a God, a deity. OK, what it says in the book of Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, thou shalt not have no other gods or none other gods other than me, because I am a jealous God. OK, so if you're saying that you're worshiping and praising Christ, you're praising and worshiping Christ as God, man. Right. Let's go to the full definition. Right. And it says right here, just like I read, you know, express warm approval and admiration of, right? And then you have your similar, okay, to applaud, to eulogize, compliment, congratulate, celebrate, sing the praises of, right? Make much of, pat on the back, right? So out of all of these similitudes here, not one time do you see worship in all of this right here, right? 
You don't see worship in praise. OK, so even though, you know, praise and worship can be used interchangeably, but it's like I said before, you know, the definitions of the two words is not really 100 percent similar. It's not the same. OK, because although they have the word praise in the definition of worship in their similitudes, but in the similitudes of the word praise, there's no worship. Right. Even down here. Where do you see worship? OK, express one's respect and gratitude towards a what a deity, especially in song. OK. So right there, when it's speaking about giving praise to a deity in which is a God. All right. Now you have worship, okay? But the first definition of it, which is a verb, okay? It says express warm approval or admiration of, okay? You don't see the word worship there until it speaks of worshiping and honoring a God, all right? Now you have worship, okay? Now, as a matter of fact, Let's look up the definition of the word deity. All right. Although most people should know exactly what that is, right? Okay. Deity. As you have it right here, deity. And the first definition is a noun and it says a god or goddess. All right. That's your deity. Right. In a polytheistic religion, okay, a polytheistic religion is someone who worship multiple gods, which is Roman Catholicism, okay, religious Christianity, not the real Christianity, all right, who worship the Most High God himself and honor Hamashiach and follow his ways. We don't worship Christ, right? So if you're worshiping and praising a deity, just as it says in the definition of worship and praise, you're giving honor to another God, as it says here, a God or goddess in a polytheistic religion. OK. So that's what it is. The similitudes, God, goddesses, supreme being, divinity, immortal creator. All right. So you're worshiping Christ as the almighty creator. All right. So that's what that is, man. OK. As a matter of fact, let's throw the definition of polytheistic in there, too. Right. Polytheistic meaning. All right. Polytheistic. And as it says here, relating to or characterized by belief in or worship of more than one God. All right. So that's what it is. You're worshiping more than one God, man. All right. So if you call yourself a so-called Christian, but you're saying that Christ is God himself, then you are polytheistic. All right. You're not monotheistic. OK, which is the opposite of this right here. OK, you're worshiping two gods. Right. And in the book of Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, it says, thou shalt not have none other gods than me. OK. So that's idolatry that our people are in, man. If they're going around telling people that Christ is God and then we should be praying to God instead of to God in Christ's name. All right. Or praying to Virgin Mary in Roman Catholicism, man. Right. Or involved in any other false religion, man. Right. Worshiping Confucius. OK. Buddha. Shiva. Madhava. OK. You're in Kemet worshiping the queen goddess, the deity Isis. All right. Horus. OK. Amin Ra, which is their sun god. All right. So this is what's going on, man. A lot of these people, unfortunately, our people are polytheistic. OK. And they're not following the scriptures here, man. Right. So in continuation, let's go back to the book of St. John, chapter four.
Okay, so here we go. We're back in the book of St. John, chapter 4. And I'm going to jump back down to verse 27. And it reads, And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? All right. So because that was, you know, the disciples, they was keeping the laws. Right. And, you know, because they was following Hamashiach, that just proves that Hamashiach was doing the will and the laws of his dad. Right. Which is his father, his heavenly father. OK, so that's how you know that Christ came to teach the laws, because even the disciples was like, yo, why are you speaking to this woman you don't even know if she's married or not not only if she's that that she's from samaria okay you know a land full of idolaters and adulterers right spiritual fornicators but you don't even know if she's married or not right so the disciples they was keeping that law right verse 28 the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said unto the men, verse 29, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is this not the Hamashiach, which is the Christ, right? So even she knew and she became a believer like, yo, you know, this guy know everything about me. He don't even know me from a can of paint, right? But he told me everything that I'm involved in, right? Especially with all of the men that I'm, I'm messing around with, including the married man, right? Verse 30. And then they went out of the city and came onto him, which is the men of Samaria, who she told, right? Verse 31. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. Verse 32. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye not know of. All right. So he was always speaking in parables, right? In syllables, right? Verse 33. Therefore said the disciples unto one another, have any man brought him out to eat Salakia, right? So they was thinking in a literal carnal sense that the Most High, well, Salakia, Hamashiach was speaking about you know literal meat like they were saying have anyone else brought him anything to eat you know why he's not eating what we brought from the city right verse 34 hamashiach said unto them my meat is to do the will of what of him that sent me who's to him that's the most high right and to finish his work okay so hamashiach didn't come in his own name and in his own will right he was sent to do the will of the most high man which is to instill the law, statutes, the commandments back into the people, right? Verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white and ready to harvest, all right? So the most eyes like, you know, don't procrastinate. You know what I'm saying? Whenever it's time to do the work, whenever you see it's fit, do the work, right? Even with me, you could take me for an example as me doing this video right here. You know, as you look at the top of the screen on the right side, it says it's 1046, right? I didn't say, you know, well, it's a little dark or a little late. You know what I'm saying? Let me, you know, wait till tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Let me wait till it's, it's daytime or whatever so I can do the work. No, nope. whenever the spirit tells you to do the work, man, you got to do the work, right? This is what you call truly serving the most high, man. Trying to feed the sheep. That we're supposed to care for right the ones who we see that's in adultery and idolatry okay calling christ god almighty himself man worshiping virgin mary and roman catholicism okay involved in all of these false other religions and philosophies and dogmas of the world man all right walking around with prayer beads okay you have spiritual rocks that you're putting all around your house right and then you're also using it for witchcraft Right. A lot of our people are dipping and dabbing into witchcraft, too, man. Right. Putting rocks by people, cars, putting it in front of people's doorways. Right. Practicing witchcraft on them. 
you know, wishing evil upon them, man, right? Wicked as hell, man, right? That's why people need to repent, man. Verse 36, and he that repeateth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto eternal life. Okay, that's the, the works of the fruit, man. That's your produce from doing your works, man. If someone actually hears your message and repent, man, that's actually your fruit, the fruit that you produced, right? In continuation, verse 36, that both he that soweth, okay, get it, soweth, and he that repeateth may rejoice together, okay, verse 37. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth, all right? Verse 38, I sent you to reap that whereupon or whereon Salakia ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. Okay. So this is what Hamashiach is referring to, man. Okay. You know, when it's time to do the work, do the work, man. You know, don't procrastinate. Don't put it off to the next day. You know, as the old saying goes, right? Don't put off to tomorrow and what you can do today and what you can do right now, man. Especially if you have free time, right? So this is what we all should be doing, man, right? Let's go to the book of St. Mark, chapter 10. Okay, and I'm going to jump down to verse 17. And it reads, And when he was gone forth into the way, they came out running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, right, which is good Lord, right, ruler over us. Okay. And that's talking about the Lord with just the capital L and the lowercase letters afterwards, right? That's not talking about all caps, right? When it's speaking about all caps, that's speaking about the Most High himself, right? In continuation, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit it eternal life? Verse 18, and Hamashiach said unto him, why callest thou me good? Okay, so this is like I was saying in the beginning of the video, man, right? Even Hamashiach said himself, right? There is none good but one. That is the most high power. All right. Verse 19. Thou knowest the commandments. All right. This is Hamashiach once again pushing, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the most high. Right. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Okay. That's speaking about physical and spiritual adultery. Right. Do not kill, do not steal. Unfortunately, a lot of our people are doing that. Do not bear false witness. Our people are doing that double time, unfortunately, right? Slandering each other, lying on each other, right? Defraud not, okay? A lot of our people are doing that, unfortunately. See, this is the reason why all of the sins are running rapid in the world, man, because a lot of our people are not sincerely taking these scriptures to heart, man. Right, that's why sin and iniquity is at an all-time high in this world, right? The fraud not honor thy father and thy mother. Okay, so when he says this here, this is you're supposed to always reference your mom and your dad in a good light. Okay, you're supposed to always exalt them to the people, man. You're not supposed to be downing your mother and your father, man, especially not your dad, man. All right. You are what your father's is, man. You know, you of the seed lineage of your dad, man. Okay? Even though your mom does go half on you, you know, half of her genetics are in you, but you are of the seed of your dad, man. And that's not to say, you know, like, you know, mix the, the holy seed with the other nations, right? And get out there and have a bunch of mixed nuts. I ain't talking about that. But what I'm speaking of, you know, if your dad is an Israelite, then that makes you an Israelite, man. And then if you have a israelite wife or woman and you happen to have a kid with her then that's a holy union man right that's a holy royal marriage 
that's what you're supposed to be doing, right? You're not supposed to be mixing and mingling with the other nations, man. That's actually a sin in the Most High's eyes. It's all throughout the Torah, man, right? So you're supposed to always honor your dad, man. Now, that's not to say that you're supposed to be following and doing everything that they say, right? I've also did a video on this, too, about how to properly honor your mom and your dad, right? You know, that doesn't mean that, you know, you have to do exactly everything they say. Because what if you have a wicked dad and mom, right? Or you still want to follow them and then you call yourself a so-called Christian and a, and a believer of the Bible, right? You can't follow your mom and dad into wickedness, wickedness, man, right? If your mom and your dad is worshiping Muhammad and Allah and Islam, okay? If they're in religious churchanity, worshiping the image of the beast, right? If they're in Roman Catholicism, if they're involved in secret societies and Greek fraternities and sororities, right? You're going to follow your mom and dad into that too? Practicing all of the wickedness of the world, following vain customs of the world, right? So that's not properly honoring your mom and your dad, man. When you honor your mom and your dad, it shows that you're always speaking highly of them. You're not embarrassing them. You're not bringing a shame to them, okay? You're always referencing them. Telling them that they raised you good, they raised you right, okay? That doesn't mean that to follow them into hell, man, right? As a matter of fact, let's bring up the definition of the word honor, right? Right? Honor definition. As you see here on my screen. Honor. And the first definition is a noun. And it says, high respect, great esteem. Okay, so that's like I was saying, man. That's how you honor your parents, right? Distinction, privilege, glory, tribute, kudos, okay? Catch it, prestige, fame, renown, merit, credit. All right. Always give credit to your parents, man. Importance. Always hold them as someone important in your life, man. Right. Notability, respect, esteem, appropriation. OK. And then your opposite is disgrace, meaning that you're always downing your dad. Unfortunately, like most of our people do today, you know, they say, oh, my dad ain't shit. Yo, don't you know that that's actually a sin and an abomination in the most highest eyes, man? And then you're going around calling yourself a Christian. A believer of the most high God of the Bible and a follower of Christ, but you saying F my dad, my dad wasn't S H I T, right? Although I already done said the word, but <laughs> but yo, but this unfortunately a lot of our people are doing this, man. And we're being taught to do this, right? Unfortunately, by the powers that shouldn't be, the mass media, because they're pushing this nonsense in our communities, right? So it's becoming like a norm. We we are coming accustomed to this right here, man. Right. And the Most High hates this, man. OK, this is abhorring to the Most High's ears, man. We're not supposed to be disgracing the dad, man, let alone the mom, because we come out of the dad. We're of the dad's seed, man. Right. The second definition. Adherence to what is right or to conventional standard of conduct. OK, integrity, honesty. All right. Regard with great respect, okay? Fulfill an obligation or to keep an agreement, okay? So you're obligated to always reference your dad and your mom, man, with respect, all right? That's how you properly honor someone, okay? So this is what the Most High was speaking about, man, in St. John 4 and uh, St. Mark 10, right? This is how you honor your mom and your dad. And this is commandments, man. Commandments are here to stay. They're here forever, right? So if your religious church teaching pastor is telling you that the commandments are done away with, then you don't have to honor your parents no more. You don't have to respect your mom and your dad no more, right? You can steal. You can kill. Okay, you can covet the next man's wife. You can covet the next man's car, his job or whatever, right? His clothing. All right. You even have some of our people coveting the next person's body. OK, they want to have muscles just like the next man. The woman want to have a big rump like the other woman, big breast or whatever. 
right full lips okay they want to look younger so they're getting facelifts all right this is coveting at it you're breaking the 10th commandment man all right the most high abhors that man okay let's go to the book of deuteronomy chapter 6 down to verse 4 and it reads here O Israel okay Yashra Allah all right you so-called Negroes Hispanics Native Americans and Seminole Indians of Negro descent only right from the Africa diaspora here O Israel the most high our power is one Lord okay monotheism okay one God one power Verse 5, and thou shalt love the most high thy power with all thy heart, which is your mind, and with all thy soul, okay, which is your body, all right, and it can be used interchangeably with spirit, right, and with all thy might, okay, verse 6, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, which is your mind, all right, so the most high even to this day is commanding us if you call yourself a bible believer and a follower of christ a so-called christian right then this is what you should be doing man as it says here in verse five and verse six right as you can see on the screen here let's go to the book of isaiah chapter 44 start at verse 1 and it reads yet here O Yaakov okay which is Jacob also known as Israel right yet now here O Yaakov my servant and Israel whom I have what chosen okay this as it says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 right verse 2 thus saith the most high that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Yaakov, my servant, and thou, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen, which is another word for uh, Israel in Jerusalem, right? Or Yasharal. Verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and the floods upon the dry land, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, okay? And my blessing upon thy offspring, which is also known as your seed, okay? So that's talking about the wisdom, the water, right? Verse 4. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses, which is the literal water, the rivers, right? Verse 5. One shall say, I am the Most Highs, and another shall call himself by the name of Yaakov, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Most High Power, and surname himself by the name of what? Of Israel, okay? So if you're a true follower and believer in the Most High God of the Bible, okay, then you're going to rename yourself with a name of Israel, with, with a name of Yashra Allah, okay? You're going to give yourself an ancient name. Hebraic name according to the ancient text, man. All right. Verse 6. Thus saith the Most High, the King of Yasharal, right? And his Redeemer, the Most High of hosts. Okay, the host is the creation, right? I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God, okay, no deity. All right. Meaning that Christ himself isn't the Most High God, man. Christ was sent by the Most High, okay? He was Lord over us because he was given dominion, but he is not the Most High God, man, right? Verse 7. 
and who as I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me since I appointed the ancient people. Who's the ancient people? Those are the Israelites, man, right? And the things that are coming and shall come, let them shoot onto them. Verse 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God or is there a power beside me? Yea, there is no power. I know not any, right? Not even Hamashiach, all right? Verse 9. They that make a graven image, okay, are all of them vanity, all right? Which is also a seven deadly sin according to the book of Proverbs, right? And their delectable things shall not profit, okay? Your Buddha is not going to profit, all right? Your Fuchsius is not going to profit, okay? Your Muhammad in Islam is not going to profit, all right? You're joining the secret societies and fraternities and, 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 and fraternities, okay? It's not going to profit you, man, all right? Your so-called uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, okay? Your self-projectory, right? Self-love, you know, self-boasting, bigging yourself up to reach your, your, your goals and stuff. And that's not to say that, you know, you're not supposed to reach and obtain your goals, right? But you can't be self-willed in this, man. You have to recognize that the Most High is giving you the polish and the knowledge to do these things, man. Not yourself, not your own carnal mind and thinking, all right? That's why it says this here, man, in verse 9 again from the top. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity and their delectable things shall not profit. And they are their own witnesses, their own witnesses, okay? They see not nor know that they may be ashamed. You're going to be ashamed by your false idol gods, man, right? Who have formed a god, lowercase g, or a molten, a graven image that is profitable for nothing, okay? Verse 11. Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed. All the people who worship in them shall be ashamed, right? And the workmen, they are of men, okay? Your, crea your uh, um, creations of men, man. Your so-called energy stones, right? Your, your, your prayer beads, right? Your, your, uh, your Buddhist statue that's in the corner of your house, right? Your witchcraft, all of that stuff. Your, your, your book of tarot, right? All of that stuff is work of men man as it says here right they are of men let them all be gathered together let them stand up yet they shall fear and they shall be ashamed together so all of the people especially our people if you're involved in those practices man you're going to be ashamed the most high is going to put you to shame man right let's jump forward to chapter uh, 45 in the book of isaiah Let's see if I can do it right here. All right. So we're in the book of Isaiah, and I'm going to start at verse 2, and it reads, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut and sunder the bars of iron, okay? which is symbolizing your captivity, right? And your oppression, verse three. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. And thou mayest know that I, the most high power, which called thee by thy name, am the God of who? Of Israel, okay? So the God of the Bible is the God of Israel, okay? Which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics. Native Americans and Seminole Indians of Negroid descent only, right? Verse 4. For ye called my servant's sake, and Israel my elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. That's what's going on today, man. Our people don't even know our God, man, right? They're offered to all of these false deities and philosophies and dogmas and ideologies of the world, right? Verse 5. I am the most high and there is none else. There is no God. Okay. Beside me, I gird thee 
the doubt has not known me okay so that goes for all of you people who like to use self projectory man the most high is girding you the most high is giving you your strength your courage you know the uh, the opportunity to create goals for yourself to reach man the most high is doing this man not yourself because you don't know as it says here right verse six that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me i am the most high and there is none else okay so the most high is reiterating this over and over and over again man right i form the light and create darkness i make peace and i create evil okay i the most high do all of these things man right so there's no other book out there that's saying it's about their god right the quran isn't saying it's about allah right the kabbalah isn't saying it's about uh shiva krishna and madhava okay the egyptian kemet book of the dead they're not saying it's about their god horus isis and amun ra okay and cyrus osiris right haru okay the ones who throw up the the, the, the black fists and kneeling down all right which is the god of haru which is symbolic for that a lot of our people are into idolatry doing that too as well but they don't know it right so there's no other book that's out there that's saying this thing about their god man you know haru ain't saying i am the one and only true god and there's none else right osiris is not saying that buddha is not saying that fuchsius is not saying that right so why our people are so heavily involved in this idolatry man virgin mary have it made her own book and said i am the only goddess and there's none else i create good and evil right Virgin Mary is not saying that, but this is what the Most High says, man. Verse 7 again from the top. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil, right? He didn't say Satan create evil, right? He didn't say the devils do it, right? Why? Because the Most High is the orchestrator of all things, man, right? I, the Most High, do all of these things, man, right? So let's go to the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, and I'm going to end it there. Now, this right here is going to be for a little thought for all of the people who like to put Hamashiach as the one and only true God, right? So we're going to see what they think about this right here. In the book of Zechariah. Lucichart makes intelligent diagramming easy and helps your best ideas become real. Start from scratch. Okay, so as you can see here on the screen, we're in the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, and I'm going to start at verse 2. And it reads, And it shall come to pass that in that day, saith the most high power of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. All right. So all of your so-called churchanity pastors, all your Roman Catholicism pastors, all your Christian pastors, all your Kemet people, right? All your Hinduism people, all your Buddhists, right? Your, your fraternity and sorority, your secret societies, all of those people, man, your self-projectors, your self-lovers, okay, your witchcraft practices, right? All of those people, man, the Most High is going to cut off, man. Verse 2 in continuation from the menu, that I will cut off the names of the idols of that land, and they shall no more be remembered, and also I will cause the prophets of the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that beget him shall say to him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Most High Power. And his father and his mother that beget him shall thrust him through when he prophesied, right? So if any wicked person shall arise after what the Most High have done, 
taken all of the false prophets out of the land, all of the unclean spirits, all of the idolaters, right? All of the adulterers, right? Spiritual and physical, right? And then if one wicked person should arise, then even your own parents are going to put you to rest, man, right? Verse 4. And it shall come to pass that in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed every one of his vision when he hath prophesied neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive right so that's what your so-called roman catholic or catholic pastor is doing they got on their garments right you got your your so-called religious churchianity pastor they're wearing their garments right with the maltese cross on it right you got all of these uh, false deities, all of these men of the world, philosophers, portraying to be the savior, right? Mohammed, okay? Fucius, okay? So you got all of these people that's going around deceiving people, right? With their so-called holy garments, right? But as it says here, when he hath prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to what? To deceive, okay? Verse 5. But he shall say, I am no prophet, all right? I am an husbandman, for man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. Verse 6. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hands, all right? Then he shall answer, Those which with I was wounded in the house of my friends, okay? So, well, season, you know, some people will portray that that's Hamashiach, right? But this isn't really speaking about Hamashiach. This is speaking about what's being said here, which is in verses two and three. Okay, this is speaking about the person who's prophesying with the unclean spirit, the ones who's portraying to be Hamashiach, right? Verse six again, and one shall say unto him, what are these wounds in thy hand? Then he shall answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Okay, so you're going to have a lot of people out here portraying to be Hamashiach, right? Of course, we know Hamashiach was nailed to the so-called cross in Calvary, right? They put the nails in the middle of his hands, right, to nail him to the wood. Okay, so you're going to have a lot of people out here portraying that, right? They're portraying to be Christ. They're portraying to be the Savior, okay, a.k.a. Mohammed, okay, Fucius. All right, Buddha, Krishna, Shiva, Madhava, okay? All of these witchcraft practices, all of these sorcerers of the world, okay? A lot of people are going to be portraying to be Christ, man, which is going on right now, all right? In continuation. And it shall come to pass that in the land, in all the land, Salakia saith the Most High Power, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein, okay? Meaning two-thirds and one-third, okay? You're going to have the two-thirds, right? Those are the ones who don't care to serve the Most High, or they're the hypocrites. They're claiming to serve the Most High, believe in the Bible, but they're not, right? They're into all of these secret societies and Greek fraternities and sororities, right? Witchcraft, okay? Verse 9. And I will bring the third, which is the hopeful one third elect, right? Through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. Okay, so that's what we're going through right now. We're going through the trials and tribulations, right? People ridicule and they're mocking us, right? They're talking down on us for believing in the Bible, talking about it's the white man's book, right? It's similar to all of the, the other fictional books that's out there, right? So this is the fire that we're going through, right? But we're being refined as the silver. And we'll try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, okay, which is the real authentic name according to the ancient Hebraic text, right? And I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the most high power, the God of the Bible is my power, okay? So that's also letting you know that there's power in the true authentic name, man. All right. The Arabic, the Aramaic name, right? The ancient Paleo name, according to the ancient Hebrew text, man. Right. There's power in that name. Right. So don't ever let someone tell you, oh, the name doesn't matter. You know, as long as we call it on God and Lord and so-called Jesus, then everything's going to be all right. Right. 
But those people are idolaters, man. Okay? They're not living within truth and spirit, as Hamashiach said in the book of uh, St. John chapter 4. Right? Verse 9 again from the top. And I will bring the one-third part out of the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and I will try them as gold is tried. Okay? So, you know, when you try gold in the heat, you purify it, right? You get rid of all the... Um, the unclean things from it, right, so to speak, right? All the impurities, so to speak. They shall call on my authentic name, and I will hear them, and I will say it is my people, and they shall say the Most High is my power. All right? So I'm going to end that there, man. You know, and hopefully that this message would drive through this like i said early in the video you know i have made a video concerning this over two years ago about is hamashiach god almighty so just like i said you know you could go check this out too and you can also listen to this right here too and hopefully that this driven the nail home hopefully that this sparks some thought amongst our people especially the so-called two-thirds the one who's really not reading these scriptures man as they should right and hopefully that this video was edifying. Hopefully that it was enjoyable. Until the next time I say, peace out. Shalom.